Our former Rangers player, Derek Johnson, uh, joins us now. Good evening, Derek. I mean, uh, no mention of it there in that uh, news conference, was it? Although the Rangers' statement says that negotiations have been going on for a few days. Well, it just looked like a, another press conference on a Friday, you know, on the eve of a, of a big game. But, uh, you know, I believe that the, the agent uh, of, of Mark Warburton spoke with Rangers at the start of the week and asked if the two could be released from their contracts, himself and David Weir. I think Rangers were, were astounded at that and eventually agreed and said, yes, we'll do that. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if you come out and say that, you know, to the, the Rangers board that you want to be released from your contract, it means you don't want to be there. So the club were with, quite within the rights to say, well, fine, if you don't want to be here, you're released. But it was a resignation from, uh, from the manager and from David Weir. I think something else has happened because the agent felt that... Uh, he, he probably had another club for the pair of them, and whether that's fallen through or not, and then Mark Warburton's changed his mind, we don't know at this stage. But uh, what I do know is that he certainly won't be in charge for Sunday's game. Uh, Graham Murty uh, will be in charge, the under-20 coach. He will be taking Rangers on Sunday. And as far as the club are concerned, you know, Mark Warburton and David Weir are no longer at Rangers Football Club. Absolutely. And from his side of the equation, we understand he is categorically saying that he has not resigned as Rangers manager. I mean, is it extremely messy? Well, it is very, very messy. But, but remember, he's, he's got an agent that acts for him and it's, it's the agent that's gone into the club and spoken on behalf of Mark Warburton. And, uh, and, and when, Rangers, when Rangers heard that at first, that uh, they, they wanted release from their contract, they simply agreed. So... You can't have it both ways. You can't say we haven't resigned, but we've sent our agent in to get the resignation. You know, it, it just doesn't make sense. It is very, very murky, but that is for, for sure. The, the two of them won't be there, and I think they've gone from Rangers. You won't see them at, at Ibrox again. The fact that uh, Rangers are so far behind Celtic, 27 points, obviously it is an enormous gap, isn't it? Has that been weighing heavily yeah. on his relationship with the board and with the club? Certainly with the supporters. The supporters have been, have been on his back and the players' back, you have to say, after they were, they were beaten by Hearts, you know, last midweek and they drew with Ross County. A lot of fans are now starting to give the manager a bit of stick and, uh, and the players. And of course, he, he's, he's got a love-hate relationship with the, the, the Scottish media as well. There's been a lot of stories printed in the last few days, a lot of which he says are not true. So whether it's all got to him and they've decided, well, enough's enough, uh, and, and, that's, and that's where we are with it now. I'm just disappointed. I mean, I, I thought Mark was a fighter and he wanted to stay there to the end. He knew he was at a big club and I thought he was going to be there to get Rangers back where they belong, but obviously that's not the case halfway through his contract. The success or otherwise of uh, signings has such a big impact on a manager, doesn't it? What about the Joey Barton incident earlier in the, the season? It was a high-profile signing. Uh, they had that massive row after the huge defeat by Celtic and then he left. Well, he did, but at the end of the day, you have to have respect for your manager. And I think uh, Joey didn't do it. I don't mind two players arguing because players argue all the time, after games and during games and at half time. But I think once you start having a go at the manager and saying things that you shouldn't in front of players, then I don't think you have any future at that club. But you know, he's had, tro he's had trouble with, it, with every manager that he's been with at, at, at certain clubs, but I don't think the manager had, had any choice but to let him go then. And, uh, and, and ever since then, you know, the Rangers midfield hasn't been the same. They've struggled. Young Rossiter they got from Liverpool has been injured for the last three months. Cranchar's out as well. So the three men that he was hoping that would take Rangers forward in midfield, all of a sudden he had none of the three of them there. So he has toiled a bit. Some of his signings haven't worked out at all. And I think that's what's got to the, the Rangers fans as well. But in saying that, they're still sitting there third top of the league. They're in the quarter-finals of the Scottish Cup, so there's still everything, really, for this club to play for between now and the end of the season. Well, it's Graham Murty who's been given charge of the team for the weekend game in the Cup. What about long-term, though, Derek? Is there any outstanding candidate, in your opinion, for what is one of the huge jobs in British football? Well, I, th I think uh, for Rangers, there's no way they can go for a manager that's still at a club because they would need to pay compensation. And I don't think Rangers have money to pay compensation to any club. We know the likes of Alex McLeish, who was here before, is out of work. Billy Davis is another one, a former player. He's been down south and had a few clubs. Even Derek McInnes, the, the Aberdeen manager. And remember, he signed a new contract with Aberdeen, a new four-year deal last year. 
They're the three that seems to be coming up. And even uh, Frank De Boer as well, who him and his brother Ronald, who were at Rangers, you know, for three or four years. Frank's now out of a contract and there's been talk that he might come over. So there are maybe two or three candidates, but uh, at this moment in time, I think Graham Murty will be in charge, certainly for the next two or three weeks anyway, until the board can get together. Dave King will probably have to come back over from South Africa, have a board meeting and then decide where the club goes forward. Obviously, a, a Scottish Cup game is always a, a big game. Does the events of tonight, though, make it an absolutely massive game for Rangers? Well, it is. I mean, I mean every game, I mean, I think if you lose a game at Rangers, you're, you're under pressure right away because you're not supposed to lose games. But this is a side that's been down in the doldrums for the last four years. You know, they've come back, they've tried to build a whole new side. And to be fair, they're actually doing well in third place. Not played a lot of great football for the majority of the season, you have to say, but there have been times where they've been outstanding. So, you know, they've got to get somebody in very, very quickly. And that's really important because Graham Murty is a youth man. He knows what he's doing with the kids. You know, to throw him in at this stage, you know, it is a bit difficult for him. But it is a massive game on Sunday. Morton are a very good side. You're talking about banana skins. This is a magnificent banana skin here. And I think Morton will come feeling that they can maybe sneak a draw and go back down to Greenock and get a replay. So for the players themselves, they've got to forget about the manager. They're playing for their futures as well. They're playing for Rangers Football Club. They're trying to get in the quarter final. So I would expect no excuses from players just because of what's happened tonight. I expect them to go out on Sunday, put on a performance and beat Morton. Derek, thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. Pleasure, thank you.